Welcome to The Breakdown with Brad Corp and Becky, a weekly podcast that breaks down politics, policy, and current affairs. I'm Becky Scher. And I'm Michael Broadcorp. We are back with a bonus episode this week related to the U.S. Senate race. In this episode, Becky and I discuss the important roles that campaigns have in the democratic process. We also detail our reasons as to why we've decided not to offer a platform or conduct interviews with Royce White, the Republican-endorsed candidate for the United States Senate. Thank you for joining us for this important episode, and we hope you enjoy the show. Becky, let's talk about campaigns for a second. Campaigns, I think, are a fundamental part of the democratic process. Uh, They provide platform for voters to engage with candidates, to learn about their policies, values, and visions for the future. Uh, I'm a Republican who has voted split ticket in the past, and I believe campaigns offer an invaluable opportunity for a dynamic exchange of ideas that greatly benefit all Minnesotans. First and foremost, campaigns are educational experiences for voters. They can offer a unique chance to hear directly from the candidates about their positions on critical issues. I think in Minnesota, we really try to value informed decision-making, and this is an important part of that process. Candidates, in the kind of nostalgic way that I think, can use campaigns to outline their positions, explain their plans, and respond to the pressing concerns of the electorate. This process, I think, helps voters understand not just what a candidate believes in some instances, but also how they intend to address the challenges facing our state uh, and country. Campaigns also encourage candidates Campaigns also encourage candidates to engage with the public in meaningful ways. You can do a town hall meetings, debates, public forums. These are all essential to any campaign. These events allow candidates to connect with voters personally, answer their questions, and listen to concerns. I believe that this direct interaction is vital in fostering a sense of accountability and transparency. It, I think it helps ensure that candidates remain responsive to the people that they seek to represent that voters and that voters have a voice in shaping political discourse by participating. Campaigns can also be, for lack of a better phrase, a petri dish or breeding ground for new ideas and uh, innovative solutions. The competitive nature, the pressure of campaigns can push candidates to differentiate themselves and present sometimes unique perspectives. This healthy competition can lead to the emergence of creative eye approaches to policy issues, driving projects, progress, and sometimes maybe innovation. For example, I think we've both done this on campaigns where someone might propose a novel solution to healthcare or education or economic. And those ideas might not have surfaced outside the pressure of a campaign or electoral process. Again, as someone who has voted a split ticket, I believe more and more about recognizing the value of considering candidates from across the political spectrum. I describe myself as politically homeless, but someone who aligns themselves mostly with the Republican Party. And I I believe that this has led me to the belief that ideas and effective leadership are not confined just to one single party. I think this is an approach that could benefit Minnesota in fostering a diverse and well-rounded political landscape, not from just one party. And so by being open to candidates from different political parties, Voters can, I hope, ensure that they are supporting the best ideas and capable leaders, regardless of simply just political affiliation. And so I'm hoping that a vigorous debate happens between candidates, because I think it's crucial for the help of our democracy. We would benefit from the debates. They expose strength and weaknesses of different policy proposals and help, I think, inform voters make good decisions. Um, the other advantage of, de- of a debate is that it challenges candidates and incumbents to defend their positions, refine their arguments, I think leading to better developed policies. And it also encourages engagement among voters, which I think you and I are both advocates for in this kind of vibrant democracy that we want to have this vibrant democratic process. When candidates engage in substantive debates and present compelling ideas, I think that they also inspire voters to become more involved. A more thoughtful debate will bring a more thoughtful voter. And this can help increase engagement, can lead to higher voter turnout, more representation, and also more of a sense of community and shared purpose. So when Minnesotans come together, I am nostalgic about campaigns and believe that they are a place where 
Voters can learn about candidates, generate ideas, and engage in meaningful debates. There's theater. I participated in some of the theater. But they also serve as a good form to educate and innovate and bring democratic participation in the process. I consider myself, again, to be a Republican, but I look at it, the electorate broadly these days, and I hope that Minnesotans will benefit from a dynamic and vigorous debate on this campaign uh, that will foster ideas for the betterment of the state. And so my hope this election cycle is that Minnesotans are treated to a robust campaign on a whole variety of levels. And I look forward to being a part of that process in our discussions with you in elevating those discussions and participation. I completely agree. I One of the reasons I got into politics was to help because in high school and college, I didn't think that my peers were informed. I think that there is something about talking to the people, making sure the voters have access to information and a healthy debate. I think debates are a great way for folks to really see one side versus the other, the differences and and even some similarities between candidates if it's a pre-primary debate. I think that it is a really crucial part of the campaign process is to have folks willing to go have those conversations, go around the state, talk with voters at all levels from rural Minnesotans, urban, suburban, talk to people from all different backgrounds and different organizations. We need to make sure that we are making ourselves, and again, I'm speaking as we as Republicans, making ourselves and our mission and vision and messaging available so folks can make their own decision and hopefully come over to our side. I, I completely agree. I think that is what a campaign is meant to be, and that's what I hope to see from all of our candidates. That's great. I'd like to transition for a second and talk about a conversation that you and I have had a little bit offline and we formulated it. And I'd like to frame up a little bit about an approach I would like to take involving Royce White and his campaign for the U.S. Senate. And I'd like to get your perspective. Again, this, is, this podcast is a partnership. You, I want to hear from you and, I'm, and I hope in some ways you want to hear me, but we have this platform, we have this opportunity. That I'm very protective of the space that we've created. I'm very proud of the discussions that we've had. I think this would be the closest thing to a monologue I think I've ever done on the podcast, but just I'd like to get your take on some things because I think it's important for the discussion that we're going to have going forward. And I think it piggybacks a lot on what we just discussed about the role of campaigns. In, in politics, candidates for office are expected to exhibit, I think, a, lead, a reasonable amount of stability, competence, and a grounding and understanding of the issues that they will address. I have a desire to help foster political discourse and facilitate meaningful conversations has really grown over the last decade, particularly on this podcast. And on this podcast, we have always championed an open dialogue and an exchange of diverse viewpoints. However, I think there is a, this openness has limits, particularly when it comes to platforming individuals who I think their behavior and rhetoric indicate instability. I would like to choose to not offer a platform or conduct interviews with Royce White, a candidate whose actions and statements suggest I believe he is unfit for office. Stability and temperament, I think, in a political candidate are paramount as the responsibilities of serving in office require, I think, a measured and rational approach to problem solving and decision making. Uh, over the course of observing Royce White and his campaign, it has become evident to me that his demeanor and rhetoric do not align with these essential qualities. I think he has consistently displayed erratic behavior that shows a disconnection from reality. And this is not merely a matter of differing viewpoints, but a fundamental issue of temperament and, if I may say, mental fitness. During my 30 years of observing, working, and observing in a variety of roles in politics, I've engaged with individuals across the political spectrum. I've never shied away from challenging conversations or conflict. Royce White's case is unique, and his approach to campaigning and public discourse is not rooted in constructive dialogue or policy discussions. It's vulgar, it's harsh, and it bothers me. It is characterized by inflammatory rhetoric, and a blatant disregard for facts. 
I think this approach not only undermines the integrity of the political process, uh, but it also erodes, for, I think it erodes an art, the public trust in the overall electoral process. I think platforming a candidate like Royce Light would be irresponsible. I think our podcast, in speaking in my I voice, is dedicated to fostering insightful and respectful political conversations. And I have, in some ways, a shared duty to ensure that we amplify voices with our platform that contribute positively to political discourse. I think offering a platform to an individual who consist consistently demonstrates instability would not only detract from the quality of our conversations, but it would also, I think, lend undue legitimacy to his candidacy. And this is going to probably be one of the most challenging aspects of what I'm going to say, but I stand by this. It is crucial to remember that not all viewpoints are valid, especially when they are rooted in delusion and misinformation. That is something that is very important. Not all viewpoints are equal. There is also an ethical consideration of potentially exploiting someone's instability for the sake of content. We have a podcast. And while, driving while having controversy on the podcast might drive listener engagement, I don't think it's worth compromising kind of our ethical standards or sometimes the well-being of the individual involved. I think Royce White's public statements and behavior raise serious concerns about his mental health. I believe very strongly it would be exploitive and in some ways morally wrong to feature him on our platform, knowing that his participation might ultimately be more harmful than helpful. And again, it is important to recognize the broader implications of endorsing or legitimizing what I would consider to be unstable candidates. In a time when political polarization is at an all-time high, I think it's important for other media outlets and political commentators to draw a line on who they choose to platform. That's their decision to make, and I'm not trying to get involved in that. But I think amplifying voices that contribute to division, misinformation, and instability only exacerbate some of the challenges our democracy faces. I hope that by refusing to not platform Rice Right, we can be help, we can take a stand in helping there be the kind of political discourse I think we all want there to have, thoughtful, respectful, and grounded in reality. Uh, I think my reason for wanting to not platform Rice Right is rooted in my commitment to ensuring that we have principled, responsible, and ethical engagement in political discourse on this podcast. I want to make it unequivocally clear that my decision not to platform Royce White is not rooted in fear. I'm not afraid of Royce White. Rather, my decision stems from a genuine concern about his ability to engage in rational and constructive discourse. Based on his rhetoric and behavior, I believe Royce White does not live in reality. His approach to politics is marked by instability and detachment from factual and reasoned discussion, which are essential qualities for anyone aspiring to public office. Moreover, I do not think Royce White is capable of listening and having a meaningful conversation. His frequent displays of erratic behavior and refusal to engage respectfully with differing viewpoints make it clear that he is not suited for the kind of substantive, thoughtful debate that our platform on this podcast seeks to promote. By choosing not to give him a platform, I aim to avoid amplifying his insanity and delusions, which would not only undermine the integrity of our discussions, but also mislead our audience. This decision is about maintaining a standard of discourse that is grounded in reality and respect for the truth. And I think his behavior and rhetoric indicate a level of instability and incompatibility with the responsibilities of his office and the office of serving in the United States Senate. I have a shared responsibility to promote constructive, meaningful conversations and not ones that undermine, I think, the very core and foundations of the democratic debate. And I understand that my take, my perspective may be controversial to some, may be controversial to you. I have come to advocating for this position after consideration of his behavior, his rhetoric, which I don't think aligns with the standards of stability and responsibility that I would expect from a public official. Others may disagree with this assessment, but I think it's essential that we maintain the integrity of 
the discussions on this podcast and ensure that the voices we amplify are positively contributing to political discourse. I believe very passionately that we are committed to fostering a space for meaningful and respectful conversations, even if it means making a difficult decision, which I would like us to make, and I'm offering my perspective on it. And I would welcome feedback on my perspective, the decision that we eventually make here, your perspective, because I think that's vital to continuing this discussion. And I would always encourage people to share their thoughts. But my hope is that by engaging in this conversation, inviting the listeners to participate and, and offer suggestions on my particular perspective and also what you he have to offer in, in your response, we are creating a more informed and engaged electorate. And that's my perspective. And I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond and agree, disagree, but that's the position I'd like to take. I appreciate you sharing that and, and leading this conversation. I do agree. I do definitely think that we do not owe a platform to anybody and us protecting this space that we have uh, cultivated over a year and a half is important. I think that we've shown from everybody that we've had on, not everybody we've agreed up with, we've had some pushback on some things, but I think we've always strived to have a place to bring new conversations and new information to people listening that they might not hear elsewhere and to just give them that swath of folks from all sides of the political spectrum. But never once have I felt uncomfortable in an interview. Never once have I felt scared or potentially that I was going to get attacked. It's always come from a place of, of starting of respect and let's be value added to both where we want to ask questions and get information and, and we want to provide our guests with a place to, to speak. When it comes to Rice White, I, I share your concerns. I think that elected officials are held to be a higher standard and should be held to a higher standard. I don't think this is unique just to elected officials. I think there are different corporate executives, celebrities, different occupations across the board where there, you just are simply held to a higher standard. And when it comes to politics, when it comes to government, I think one thing that has really eroded how we conduct business is the vitriol, is the instability of slings and, and uh, uh, slinging poor words and attacks at each other and just the distraction. I think that there has been so much, and we can look back to the Speaker McCarthy takedown of something that derailed our government for weeks on end. And when we have these distractions and when we have people in positions, whether it's candidates or elected officials who are just going to be in that distraction era, we America loses. Minnesotans lose. And that's not something I want to be a part of. I want to find a way to continue to have a space that is productive, interesting conversations, providing resources and information and just civil dialogue to back into this crazy wild world that we've spent decades in. So I completely agree here. I think that it's unfortunate that this is the current candidate for U.S. Senate. I think that there needs to be, there is a way to have alternative opinions. There is a way to be part of this anti-establishment, screw the man kind of system. There's a way to do that and still be respectful to the folks around you. There's a way to have conversations with reporters, with podcasters, with voters without having to go down this wild little rabbit hole that I feel like happens when you look at and, and what we get from Rice White. And I just don't think it is something, I'm glad you brought this up because I just don't think it's something that we need to be a part of. It makes me feel uncomfortable to be a part of. And that's, yeah, that's where I stand on it. I support it. I agree with it. And I want to keep this space what we've built over the last year. I appreciate that, Becky. I appreciate your support, and I, I and you offered some great insight as to your take, your perspective on it too. I, I feel good about the decision. I would also say to you that I think that there's some larger, broader issues about how Royce White got endorsed and party process things that I think we should discuss at some point. I don't think that this precludes us from 
ever discussing the Senate race or particularly Royce White's candidacy. But I think that we have taken, we've staked out a position that absent there being a fundamental change in some of the responsibility that in that operation, we're not going to platform it. And I think that's a really good decision that we've made here. And I'm proud of the place that we've staked out. Because one thing I will say is that there is so much good that we could be focused on right now on this podcast and discussing. Op, there's so many good policy discussions that we could be having about the direction of the state. There's going to be a great battle for the Minnesota House of Representatives. There's going to be a presidential race that's going to, where Minnesota is going to be in there. And we have views on that. And I'm not, I don't think we should ignore the Senate race, but I think we've carved out a space that we're not, and, and someone who we're not going to platform and whose views we're not going to allow to come on this podcast and uh, disintegrate what we've tried to build. And so I view this as a wonderful decision for us to focus on all of the good that's out there in politics. We are going to disagree on this podcast. We are going to have disagreements together. We got a football season coming up. There's so much good that we're going to talk about. But I'm really proud that we've put a fence around this particular subject and say that this is not where we're going to go. I think it's a great way to just pivot us into covering this election cycle and reporting as we're going to do. I'm very appreciative uh, of this podcast space and you working with me and being a co-host and being such a good partner and fostering this space. And that's part of the reason I wanted to be protective of it because I think it would really dissolve it. And I'm so proud of the decision we made today. Absolutely concur. All right. Have a great one. Thanks. Bye. We want to thank you for listening to this bonus episode of The Breakdown with Broad Karma Becky. Before we go, show some love for your favorite podcast by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or the platform where you listen. You can also leave us a review or give us a shout out on our website or across all social media platforms at BB Breakpot. The Breakdown with Broad Karma Becky will return next week. Thank you for listening.